What's going on guys, welcome back to another video, as an animation I make a match, this is the 12th installment of Mansion, and uh, yeah, here it is. I based this one a lot off the 10th, I used the same uh, detailing, but I changed up some colors and uh, some proportions and stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't have a whole ton else to say about this one, this, is about in the, this one is about in the middle of size, uh, some of them are bigger and some of them are smaller. I actually thought it was one of the smaller ones until I was looking around and realized, eh, it's actually not that small compared to my other ones, other than the 10th one. But yeah, that's all I have to say, so that being said, enjoy the tutorial, and I will catch you on the flip side. Alrighty, so the space you're going to be here for this is a 65 by 40 originally, I thought this was one of the smaller mansions, ironically it's about in the middle. And the materials we're needing are stone bricks, I think to start off. Birch planks, black stained glass pins, dark oak planks, dark oak doors, stone brick stairs, stone stairs, pillar quartz blocks, and hmm, that's an awkward number of things. We'll go tripwire hook, and then we can get rid of the tripwire hook and get out something else, then we can get rid of that, and then get out another thing, and then, yeah. You also need, let me see if I can think of all these, stone buttons, spruce wood planks, and stairs and slabs. Do you say tile, stairs, slabs, and blocks? Polished deep slate walls? I think that's it. Probably missing something. That's all I can think of. So you want to come to the, starting from the front right hand corner of your 65 by 40 grid cough go if you made it you want to count backward diagonally t diagonally to the left by one and going left you want to place 15 stone bricks go back by five left six then this is an odd thing you want to leave a four block gap so count to the fifth block Left of that, and going left, place another seven stone bricks. Then go forward with five, left with fourteen, back with five, left with six, back with eight. Left with 11. Back one. Back diagonally to the right of the sideways pillar quartz block facing front to back. Back four. Back diagonally to the left of the stone brick. Back one. Back diagonally to the right of the sideways pillar quartz block facing front to back. Back four. Back diagonally to the left of the stone brick. Back one. Right 11. Back 9. Right by 51. And then forward by 36. Like so. Now you have this shape. Um, it looks like a turtle. I, it just does. Shell, legs, um, head with eyes. <laughs> You're welcome for that entirely random division of the day. Um, but yeah. Oh, uh, that, by the way, that 4x36 is literally just connecting forward to that. Right, there you go. Now, okay, this is where it gets a little complicated. Where do we want to start? Let's start with the garage doors because we can swipe out a couple of materials over here. So you want to come to the f two rows of five sideways pillar quartz blocks, and you want to start off by bringing each row up by two of the sideways pillar quartz blocks. Do nothing with the stone bricks as of right now. Like so. Place a tripwire hook in the bottom center of either one. 
Uh, get rid of said tripwire hook and get out stone buttons, and then along the top row, place row of five stone buttons on either one, on either one like that. Uh, get rid of the stone buttons and get out. I'm trying to think. We'll go birchwood stairs because those will be easy to get rid of. Um. Okay. Bring the actual, technically the front of the garage and the technically left of the garage, but if you're looking at it from the front of the build, it'll be the back and the left side. You want to bring each stone brick there up by three with birchwood planks. So it's this. I can't really describe it any better than it's this row right there. Hold on. Let me actually just bring everything up and then I'll show you. It'll be that. That'll be the thing that you do. And then you can connect the top rows together above the birch, or I mean the pillar quartz block garage doors. Um, <laughs> okay, so I guess we're just gonna work around the front here with the window patterns. I guess that's a more reasonable thing to do rather than whatever I think I might wanna do, which I don't know what that is. That's the hardest part about something like this. God knows what you should do to get a good thing okay you want to bring this row of birchwood planks here right by two rows we're just gonna start off with this I forgot the okay never mind um bring that bottom birch plank right with two black stained glass panes birch plank two black stained glass panes and then we'll go four birch planks copy that row two more times you'll see why I'm upset in a second here I missed something on the grid And then you want to bring everything except for that end block here, this far left block, up in the, an additional birchwood plank, like that. And then to the left and the right of each window, you want to place a uh, pillar quartz block facing up and down that is as tall as the build as, as of right now, which is I think five blocks. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot the red concrete's there. Um. So, this will end up, um, there will be more with this, but uh, we don't have the materials as of right now, and we don't particularly have a way to get the materials, unless we did a switch in our inventory, which is something we could do, because, yeah, we, nah, I'm not gonna do that, because I don't think it really helps very much. Um, okay. This row right here, the row moving forward from the end of these four birch planks, you want to bring each of those stone bricks on this row up by 12 with birch planks. And then it'll just be this row. We'll add, we'll add all the pillar quartz blocks at the end. I think that's a, oh no, what we'll do is we'll do the windows and then we'll do the pillar quartz blocks and then we'll do the window de detailing and then we'll, I don't know actually, but yeah, there you go. You can also, I guess, include this block there, which I will. So yeah, there you go. Um... Actually, the next thing you can do, ignore the right back and the little back of the left there because those don't count, but you want to bring every stone brick here along this front kind of squiggly line up with a single birch plank. Uh, this will just help us later in numbering, I guess? I don't know. And then I'll actually do the window pattern as one big thing. That seems like a reasonable thing to assume. So there you go. Again, ignore the right in the back, but you just want that. Especially the back. The back has some special stuff going on. So, going along this pattern, you want to place from this, uh, from the left side, you want to go right and place birch plank, two black stained glass panes, three birch planks, forward with five, right with two birch planks, two black stained glass panes, five birch planks, two black stained glass panes, three birch planks, then back with five, right with two, then right with two black stained glass panes, two birch planks, skip over the gap, two birch planks, two black stained glass panes, three birch planks, four with five, right with two, then right with two black stained glass panes, five birch planks, 
two black stained glass pans, and then three birch planks. Copy that entire row two more times. That was not fun. While we do this, hopefully everyone is having a good day or night. I am for the most part. Uh, I know I'm probably a few days late on talking about this. Um, like it'd probably be over a week late, I think. But um, the day that I'm recording this is the day that the uh, Hello Neighbor Revived map trailer came out, so that's pretty cool. If you haven't seen that, uh, check it out, I guess, because the map actually is out. I released the map at that time, and I want to say thank you, everyone. I'm recording this about an hour and a half after I uh, posted the video. The map has been up for like six hours, I think, because I posted it early just to make sure everything was working fine. And um, it already has more downloads than I was anticipating in this amount of time, which is cool. It's not a ton. It's only 15, or it's 14 when I check, but it might be 15 now. I don't know. But yeah, uh, thank you for everyone who has supported that because that took way too long for all of us. That was a lot of effort that we were. I was like, hey, guys want to do a Hello Neighbor project, and that was kind of random, but uh, I think it's turned out pretty good so far. Still not done. Not even close to done. But, um,. It's out now, and then I will post probably video, a video every time that I update it. But yeah, there you go. There's that. Not enough about Hello Neighbor. So, that little uh, four block gap there. You want to connect the stone bricks together in and then bring them each back by one there. And the middle two blocks at the back place a set of double dark oak doors and then surround the doors in dark oak wood planks. Bring the planks up by one at the top, and then above either corner block, push an upside down birch stair facing towards the middle, and then you can actually get rid of your birch wood stair, I think. Hope so. Allegedly. <clears throat> and then we can get the polished deep slate walls, because those will be also pretty quick, and we can actually do that right now. You want to bring the those four stone bricks again forward by three. You'll never hear the end of them. And bring them left and right by one each. Bring it forward to the row of stone brick stairs. And then bring the stairs left and right with a pillar quartz block. And then bring the back stone bricks left and right with pillar quartz blocks as well. And then you can bring said pillar quartz blocks up by six. Connect them together with sideways pillar quartz blocks at the left, front, and right side. Don't do the back, because it'll be separate. That you'll, it'll be something else there. And then what you can actually do is in the little gaps here at the left and right, you can just fill this in with stone bricks in between the sideways and between the pillar quartz blocks, and then place polished deep slate walls. And then you can get rid of those walls and get out. We'll go dark oak wood slabs. Now, on top of the entire basically shape that we have now, and not including the little going back at the door there, you want to bring everything up with three rows of birchwood planks. Um, also, while we do this, I do just want to point out, uh, this is kind of similar to the last one that I did, although, A, it's smaller, B, I changed some of the colors up, and, uh, that's as much as I did, really. I kept a similar design. But, um, I think this one, the color scheme looks better, but on the, the last one just generally looks better because of it, how impressive it is. Also, again, above the dark oak area, just make it a flat wall, don't pull, don't push it back like the door is because that's just to give it some depth if you don't want to push back the door that's completely fine i do just so it looks better but i know that will cause some inside mishaps but um yeah there you go all oh, that looks ugly i noticed that when i was making this i looked at the back side of a wall and i was like ouch that's ugly um now it's another window pattern time this is when things are going to get a little bit more complicated you want to first I'll make sure the three is correct, which it is. You want to go basically you're copying the window pattern, except there will be a big window in the top center there. So to refresh, birch plank, two black stained glass panes is going left to right and just following the pattern. I'm not saying forward to back this time. Three birch planks, then another five, 
then another two. Two black stained glass panes, five birch planks, two black stained glass panes, three birch planks, then another five, then another two, two black stained glass panes, two birch planks, four black stained glass panes, two birch planks, two black stained glass panes, three birch planks, another five, another two, two black stained glass panes, five birch planks, two black stained glass panes, and three birch planks. There you go. Nice. Copy that row two more times. Okay, I'm looking at that window, and that window is dumb. This is when I'm going to struggle because of the way that window works. But, uh, yeah. This is going to look extremely ugly for a little while, but it's because the way we're doing this. I think I, I think I made it differently on the last one to where we were doing the detail as we were doing the walls, but I'm going to do the detail after we do the walls. I'll do, I'll do the front, and then I'll do the detail, and then we'll do the sides, and I'll talk about the detailing as well for them. And, yeah, it'll be all simple. And this one may end up being... Actually, no, this one will not be longer than the last one. Last one I did have to cut short, though, so... Because Share Factory. But now I don't have to do that anymore, because I have a PC that I can edit on, which is cool. Hence the uh, Spirit Flagship interior being longer than an hour this year, which it should have been last year. But, uh, Share Factory said no. Share Factory should let you do, like, up to 90 minutes, I think. That would be a reasonable time, and let you... Just, yeah, just do up to 90. There you go. Now, f excluding that center window, you want to bring everything else up with two birchwood planks. That center window, you want to bring all those panes up with two panes each. And then it will be as tall as this, which is cool. And then that's where the com complexionness, that's a word, happens. You'll see. But yeah, again, this window, oh, up, oh, up, oh, two panes. Nope, nope, okay, we're doing great over here, guys, it's fine. It's completely fine. Completely, utterly fine. There you go. <laughs> okay. Guess we ought to, ought to start adding that detail, huh? So... I guess I should just explain this based off the areas. So obviously the two areas that look the same are the same. This little left section, basically what you want to do is from the corner, you want to count back one and place a pillar quartz block, and again from that corner, count right one and place a pillar quartz block. Two black gap going right from that front one, another pillar quartz block, and basically off of each corner you're going to want to count along the wall by one in either direction and place a pillar quartz block. Each corner that is an outward corner, or like an actual corner, it's not like a... I don't know how to describe it. I guess you don't really have to add one. I'll add it there, whatever. So it'll look like that basically is what you have. And then over here you have those three done. And then basically what you want to do is at the these two big sections, you want to find the middle, which is right here. I'll place the slab. There's the middle. And you want to count left and right by one from that middle and place a pillar quartz block again. And this is all just along the floor. And then... Actually, what we're going to do real quick is take these back pillar quartz blocks from the porch and you just want to bring them up by six. Like that. So they're as tall as the wall. And then two blocks away from those, you want to place another pillar quartz block. Like so. Now, bring all those one tall pillar quartz blocks up by 12. So they're as tall as the wall. And this is where um, fun stuff will happen. That's cool, I didn't mean to make that taller than the wall. I don't have anything to talk about. But I don't want to go silent either. But I am going to make sure that I'm not accidentally muted. Because, you know, 
Especially on a video like this, that would suck, wouldn't it? Ah, that's a wall. Okay. This one I don't think is specifically that bad. The other one was only bad because it's like three times the size of this one. Seriously though, you could fit- The funny thing with that mansion is you could fit another mansion inside of it. But I mean, to be fair, you could fit basically any of these mansions inside my grand mansion. Actually, I don't think that one would fit- Not- The one to the left of that, I don't think that would actually fit in my grand mansion. I think that's a little bit the way that it works. Although I think if you took the overall block spacage and like made it outline the building that'd be interesting i should try that i should try taking a copy of the world gutting the grand mansion and trying to fit how I, she's trying to see how many tutorials of mine i can fit in that that would be really cursed um but yeah there you go that looks a little bit better doesn't it it's still not great so what we can do is we can from each window you want to on the birch planks below each one place opposite on dark oak slabs and then above either one place, normal dark oak slabs. And then, for the four block windows, it will go along the entire section. However, there is something special with these specific, the furthest front sections. That makes them a little bit different. So you see this one block app that you have in the middle here. Those dark oak slabs want to port um, protrude into that little area like that. So it basically creates a solid line. You can bring them around the entire build if you wanted to. I think it might look a little odd if you did that. I didn't, but um, again, it's uh, totally an option. An interesting option, but it's an option. I think if you're uh, trying to go for something a little bit fancier, then I would do that. And then leave the big window for now because that doesn't do anything. I kind of forgot that this is a four block section. But two block sections are just below and above the windows. Four block sections, it spans the entire thing. And ironically, actually, only the only four block sections do cross over one another. At least these two do. So yeah, that'll look a lot nicer. Yeah. So it does have some off symmetry to it as well, which I think is nice. And then you'll kind of notice you have this dead space in between those uh, those dark oak slabs between the windows. In line with that, you want to place upside down stone stairs wrapping around the entire build, just in line with the birch. Or just o over the birch, I mean. And then, obviously, when you hit a corner like this corner, basically what I do is I place an upside down stone stair facing forward, and then just bring it forward with two stairs facing left. And then just kind of pretend like it's going through the pillar courts a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so yeah. Pretty simple. These look, I think the detailing is amazing, and as much as that, I think, like, it takes a lot longer, but it it's not extremely difficult to do. Sure, it's a complex look, but, I mean, it's not like anything. Also, at the left side, I just leave this back one. I wouldn't put one there, because it's going to be a wall moving up there later. So, yeah, there you go. That's basically the front done. Um, What should we do? Because... See, we're in an awkward spot. We can't get rid of any of our materials. Actually, I think we can get rid of the dark oak slab. No, wait. Don't forget the two block windows at the garage. Don't forget the dark oak slabs there. You don't need the stone stairs, but you do need the dark oak slabs. Now I think we can get rid of the dark oak slabs. Is that it? Actually... I believe you can get rid of your black stained glass panes as well. And let's get out spruce wood slabs and spruce wood planks. I would recommend moving them so they are next to each other, which I'll just do that real quick, like that. And then, okay. This where it gets a little weird. Because I don't know exactly how I want to do this. Let's just start by doing something, I guess, simple. Okay, come to the um, front center window first off, this big boy. And what you're going to want to do is... You want to bring the birch planks. You want to basically bring either pillar quartz block here, off with a spruce wood plank, 
and then bring all these birch planks up by one, and then connect the spruce wood, uh, connect the spruce wood planks together with dark oak wood slabs. So I guess get rid of your dark oak planks and get our dark oak slabs. We're just gonna use the slabs as the planks. Okay, we need spruce wood stairs. Kind of right now. What I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna tell you to basically wrap the rest of the build in line with the top row of birch wood planks in opposite on spruce wood slabs at the front here. And then just once you hit the sides and it's off, just hit the pillar quartz block on either side, I guess, and then stop. And then obviously don't go over the window because that'd be dumb. God, this is uh, kind of complicated. I didn't realize how complicated this was. Um, yeah, and I'll just stop once I hit that. Actually, no, I'll go all the way to the end of the on the left side here, like so. Now, at the two front longer sections, which are the double window ones, which I think ironically is the same design as the other mansion, but you can't see it from here. On top of the farther out pillar course blocks, you want to place a spruce wood plank and then bring that out with a slab. Bring those in with an upside down slab, then go up with the slab, in with the plank, in with an upside down slab, up with the slab, in with the plank, in with an upside down slab, up with the slab, and then in with the plank in the middle. And then that'll give you the this type of a A shape. These peaks are always the same. If you've seen a single one of my tutorials, you'll know it. At least out of the recent, I guess, suburban houses, which they tend to be one of my more popular uh, series, which I find quite interesting. There you go. It's cool, but did I? Uh, <laughs> notification. Now. God, we're at such a loss. Okay, you want to come to the porch here, which is this really, really weird box of pillar quartz blocks. What you want to do is off the top block on either side, you want to place an upside down spruce wood slab moving forward and then bring it up with a slab. Bring either upside down spruce wood slab out by one and then connect back that sticking out one to the upside down stone stairs. Connect the two upside down slabs together with spruce wood blanks, and then that'll give you that. I hate this. I really hate this because of the materials. I actually think we're done with our stone bricks. So get rid of them. And get out. We'll just use deep slate tile slabs momentarily. And you want to bring this little roof setup back with deep slate tiles. Make sure you do do full blocks where there's full blocks and slabs where there's slabs. You don't actually need to worry about the upside down slabs. And I just make full blocks out of slabs for this part right here just because I really can't be bothered to clear more inventory space. Although if you want to try to do it and go for it, I don't care. It's up to you. Now, okay. We'll need that again, but for the intentions of finishing the front of the build, get rid of the deep slate tile slabs and get out spruce wood stairs. And moving out out from either spruce wood plank here at the front center, at the top, place a stair facing out. Just like that. Then do the same on top of either one of those planks. Then go in with an upside down stair. Up with a stair. In with an upside down stair. Up of the stair, in with an upside down stair, and then up of the stair, and then that will give you this. Cool, I guess. I don't know. That's what you want to call it. Now you basically have the front peaks done, and what I do is I just fill all of them in at the back with birchwood planks, just so you don't have any holes in your attic, because no one wants to see in there. Probably not. I apologize if this is kind of weird because we're kind of going all over the place, but it's just for inventory space because I'm not going to be like, okay, get rid of this and then, okay, three seconds later, you want that back again. Kind of like what I did with the dark oak slabs. There you go. 
Now, let's go to the back left. And you want to orient yourself so that way you're facing towards the front of the building. The garage is the right, the other side's the left. You get how you know how it goes. And you want to, on the second stone brick moving technically left from our perspective, you want to place a pillar quartz block moving forward or towards you. Bring that left with three stone brick stairs and then a pillar quartz block. Now get rid of your stone brick stairs. Thank God they're gone. And uh, I guess get our dark oak wood planks. And what you want to do is you want to, in the middle of this section, behind the middle stone brick stair, place a dark oak door. Bring that up with three dark oak wood planks. And then bring the stone bricks left and right of that door up with five dark oak planks. That was the biggest thing we need, because now get rid of your dark oak slabs, planks, and doors. And get out. De not block of quartz. Deep slate tiles. Deep slate tile slabs. And not red sandstone, but deep slate tile stairs. And I think that is actually everything you need. Let me just check the garage doors. Yeah, I think that's everything we need. And what you want to do is every single stone brick on the remaining left, back, and right, you want to place 12 birchwood planks on top of. Now, what I would do is at the right side, I would connect to the front. Just, I guess once you just get here, whatever, nobody cares. It's not like you're gonna, unless you want to use the attic, then I'd like, I'd give it like five or six blocks or something. And then maybe just connect like the top three rows or something. And then if you need to connect more later, you can. But, um, what was I saying? You basically just want to, if you, and once you do that, you also want to just bring up the dark oak wood planks up with, uh, I think it's going to be like seven birch planks to get at the right height. Yeah. And then, yeah, now this is a lot of filling in, and I'm not going to cut this out, because why would I cut it out? And I'll try to make this, I guess, as quick as I can. Hey, it makes the video look longer, it makes the thing look more impressive. It's like, I feel like that's like a win-loss situation because more people are going to be like, I don't want to watch a longer tutorial, but maybe people will be like, oh, maybe there's more in it because it's longer. Or like, it's a more... It's a better build. Generally, I feel like better builds will take longer. Because like, let's say I make... Um, I don't know, you can compare this to some of the other mansions and some of those are like 35 minutes. I mean, some of them maybe because I didn't fill in walls or whatever, but also because they aren't detailed. <laughs> This one's so detailed, I think that's what kind of makes it, um... A little bit more of a time-consuming thing, but I think the way I did it is... Make, made it a little bit quicker. Because I didn't do it in any, like... Crazy way. It's not like we were, um... I don't know what I was saying. Kind of forgot halfway through, I started zoning out. Also, another thing I'd recommend adding windows, obviously, based off of your inside space. I do have the sections, as I do on the front, just for windows or whatever you may want to add. And again, if you wanted to bring the dark oak wood slabs around, you could. Or I need to get in the habit of not saying wood, because there's no wood in that word. That's two words. That's not a word. That's two words. But, uh, yeah. See, that was pretty quick. Now you have walls. What I would do is I would do, coming from the right side, I'd go, I'd leave every four blocks, place a pillar quartz block, fifth block back, pillar quartz. So, so again, just every four blocks, four block gap in between each one. And then it'll make it one away from the corner at the back. You just want to go across the back, placing them a four apart. And then you'll hit the stone brick stair. And then it'll be a pillar course block there, and that'll be a three block gap, and then at the left side, I just place one there off the corner. If that didn't make any sense, that's what it should look like. Every single one is four blocks apart, except for the... Obviously going around the corners, and then the where the dark oak door is. 
And then you can bring each of those pillar course blocks up by 12. This is a very, very uh, time consuming part for not for how not many blocks it is. It's uh, <laughs> it's boring. That's I think the big thing, especially with some of these detailed builds. It's it can get repetitive or it's just like boring because it's just like okay now I got to work on this one part for 30 minutes, even though this doesn't take 30 minutes. But you get the point, I think. This video hasn't even been 30 minutes. No, it has. It's been about 35, I think. No, it's been about 30. Which honestly isn't that bad. That's a pretty reasonable. I'll probably make a cut once I'm done the like detailing and whatnot. Yeah, once I do this and then the spruce wood slabs and stone stairs, I will probably make a cut. Just so I don't run into any issues with video savings or whatever. What's annoying about it on PlayStation is sometimes I think it'll save like 59 or like 58 minutes or something instead of doing an hour. Based on storage, and it's it's a little bit weird. But I think my storage is fine. I'm pretty sure I have a lot of space. But still, it's just like, bruh. I don't want to run into that issue, you know? Uh... But yeah. So there you go. I don't know why I'm showing you the front. But yeah, there you go. A lot of pillar quartz blocks. And then you want to wrap your upside down spruce wood slabs and upside down stone stairs around the entire build. Only difference is the upside down spruce wood slabs do want to go at the left side. The stone stairs don't because they're going to be too low. I mean, you, you can add them if you really wanted to. But they're not going to make a difference. Because the roof over there is going to cover it up. And I actually thought that roof was going to be too steep. But it worked out pretty nicely with the heights of everything. And if you wanted to have some gap stuff here, you can. However, I don't know if that will work out. Hold on. Pillar quartz block is... What is that coordinate? Negative 759. Oh, it would actually work out. Okay. Yeah, that would work out perfectly. Doing it by fours. Um, I didn't actually think it was going to... But uh, because it's in line with one of those, which works out nicely if you want it to. I actually am going to do that, I think. Because I think that'll make it look a little bit better. Just give that less side, less blandness. Left side, less blandness. Did I say less side or did I... I don't even know anymore. And then the, also the stone stairs should be directly above the dark oak wood planks. Which just makes it a separate section. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do the these things. I think the only reason I didn't is because they would touch down in certain spots, and I was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, because that would create a really awkward corner there. I mean, I guess it's not that bad. Three, four. Oops. It's not, yeah, that's not that bad. And it's not like it's a huge thing. You don't have to do it. You, there's really nothing much to it, just a little little bit of extra detail. I actually think that it was look better though. So I'm gonna make that cut I said I would make. So Alright, I made that cut I said I was gonna make. Now, um Come to the garage, which we were already at the left side ironically. And you wanna place at this left row of birch planks, you wanna place a row of deep say tiles. Just on top of it directly. Bring it off the front and the back with a spruce wood plank, and then bring it off the, that entire row off the left side with a row of spruce wood slabs. Take the planks, and you want to bring them... Okay. You want to bring them right with an upside-down slab. Up with the slab. Right with a plank. Right with an upside-down slab. Up with the slab. Right with a plank. Right with an upside-down slab. Up of the slab, right with a plank, right with an upside down slab, up of the slab, up of the plank, right with an upside down, sorry, right with the plank, right with an upside down slab, up of the slab, right with the plank, and do that at the front and the back ones. I love those numbers. Big numbers are always horrible to say. Actually, I made that perfect. It is three rows. That's cool. And then you can connect the spruce wood planks front to back with its respective deep say tile. So slab to slab, block to block, excluding the upside down slabs, obviously, because that'll just be filled in in a second here. You could add a room under here. You have plenty of space. I guess up here, not under here. I guess it is under the roof, so technically I'm not wrong. 
but most rooms are under roofs. Unless your bedroom is just open. But I mean, I, I mean, things happen. I'm, I can't, I can't like assume because I don't know what's gonna happen. But you never know. I don't know what has happened. Oops. There you go. Quite simple. And then. I actually would bring those pillar quartz blocks down an additional block, which I don't think I'm going to have to go to the inside to do that. That's fun. I just think it'll look better if it goes through the roof instead of the roof going through it. Yeah, it, la it looks like it's now latching into the roof instead of just being there. And then the, um, I guess triangle at the front and the back, you want to fill this in with birch wood blanks because no one wants to see into your attic. And then we'll do one more thing on the front. And then we can do the big boy roof, which is literally the entire build. The roof is the entire build. And then if you saw the last mansion, it's basically just that roof, but it's slightly different because of the way the, peak, the peaks are slightly different. But I actually think these are the same. I may have made those sections the same amount of width. Uh, come to the front and what you want to do is at the garage windows here, you want to place a spruce with a slab on top of either pillar quartz block, except for the left one, because that already has a plank on it. Connect them together and then bring them all the way left and right. Like that. Just kind of makes it so we don't have to bring them all the way up, because I think it looks dumb if you do that. Now. This is a weird roof. I don't know how to explain it perfectly, but what I'm going to tell you is... On top of each birchwood plank that is at the Y level of 22 when you're standing on it in bedrock edition, it might be 21 or, or... For me, you see everyone that's on 22. I shouldn't say that generally. Everyone that's at the lower level that I said the, the original height of the walls was, which is the 12 block one. I know that's a dumb explanation, but it's all these. You want to bring them up with a deep side tile block. I'm gonna do this quickly and then I'll give you a break and kind of show you exactly what I mean if you are unsure. And then obviously if you need to pause or whatever, no, I, I won't know if you do, so. You could be like, nah, I didn't pause a single time in that video when you secretly paused every 12 seconds. So yeah, there you go. You can see what I'm talking about there. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see it's basically just the walls. And then... I'll give you another second. Bring each deep side tile block up with a stair. And then the stairs want to go in at the front left and front right peaks by one on top of the birch planks. And then you want to place a deep side tile block moving in. And then at the other peak, it'll just be brought in by one and it'll connect perfectly to the stairs. So basically, that's the angle that we have at this inner side. Because that'll show you both. And then that'll just wrap around the entire thing. And then the back, left and right are easy. There's nothing special there. And then the next row up, it'll get... It'll basically be doing the same thing. It's basically just how do the roofs connect. And that was actually something I struggled with when I was originally making this. Because I, like... I didn't logic the fact that the roofs are two separate roofs. And I was like, okay, this roof should just link to this one. But it doesn't quite... It's hard to explain. And then from the stairs, you want to place a row of deep side tile blocks upward diagonally inward by one. And then basically what it'll do is it'll come behind the row of stairs. And at the middle peak, it'll extend in by tile stair. And then at the other side, it'll go two past that block. It'll connect forward and then that slab will go back. So that is now your angle. I swear it'll be easier once we get past this one. It's hard to explain, but basically just think about how the roof should connect. And if you even wanted to, you could bring these peaks back by one or two, and then basically just take the shape of the build and wrap the rest of the roof around it. If that makes it a little bit more logical to you, you can do that. So basically you're connecting the roofs that are, that already exist instead of making them take, making them at the same time. That can be confusing at times. I think especially with a roof that you've never done before, maybe it is easier to bring one like all the way back and then be like, okay, if this one is here, how will this connect to that? I think, but I mean, for me, I've made so many different roofs. I'm like, okay, this probably will look like this or something. 
So, I mean, I think as a general thing, maybe even I'll... I have, don't think I've ever done that. I don't know. I haven't made, like, a roof for the first time in a while. I guess this one on the other mansion. But you get the point. It's like, I don't know. But I think if, like... I know there are instances where people don't like doing roofs that much. And, um... That's one of those things where it might help. <clears throat> and then, again, it's just... One thing you do want to remember is what the actual deep state tile pattern is. So then it'll just be follow the S shape, obviously, and then at the front peak it'll just connect pretty basically. And then this one it'll go in by one, connect forward with a slab, and then the blocks will go back by two and connect into its path. So there is the new look shot. And then it'll be one more... Uh, around of the type of roof that we're doing. This is kind of like a medieval roof, how I do those, how it goes up by two, except it only looks different because it's wrapped around the entire build. It doesn't have like an open side or something. That's something I do with these mansions generally. I don't have like the peaks, like you can see that one over there. That actually is a bunch of little peaks though, the one in the distance there above the windows, which I think looks weird and cool at the same time. Um, but like, obviously like you have Oh, hold on. Obviously, you have these ones, which those don't count. I'm talking about, like, the actual big roof itself doesn't really have peaks. It's kind of just, like, it goes all the way around. That's just generally a thing. But certain sections probably will have peaks or whatever. And then, from there, I think it's actually really easy, because it's basically just backward, diagonally, upward with the road deep state tile blocks. And then the two stairs will just connect back to it with two stairs. And then the rest of it's literally just wrapping it around because the other two peaks have already been passed in height at this point. I guess this will be the first row that does pass them. Um, but yeah. Again, if you're struggling with it, I look at my I look at the video and see, okay, how does this work? And then also if you still don't understand it, I take the peaks, I take the front three peaks, bring them back, say, four or five blocks. And then start bringing this roof, maybe like do the right side or something, and then bring it around the front and see, okay, where exactly are these roofs going to connect without any gaps. That's, I think, the big thing. Just don't have gaps. And then on top of the top row, deep say tiles, it'll be a deep say tile stair thing, and there's just nothing to say here other than I just, just go around the shape. And then once you do that, it'll just be filling in the center, and then we'll be done. I'll fill in some of the center, but not all of it, because I don't have the time for that. I mean, I do, but... I don't feel like doing it, basically. In other words... Um, but yeah, hopefully I will have another Lil Nightmares 2 episode out soon as well. I know that's unrelated, but uh, I want to do the... Double alley, I'll call it. Or the, um... The big, big section is a time lapse. And then once you do that, you want to fill in the center of this roof again in with deep set tiles. I'm going to be honest, I didn't even do it on the original. I just did the front and just did like the front little sticky outies and then did slash roof for the rest of it. But about the little Nightmares 2 thing, my plan right now is to just try to progress wherever I can because I'm burnt out on the terraforming and that's not going to change very much. And I may see if I can like try to get somebody, I don't even know, gaming warehouse or someone to just do it with me so I can progress it A, quicker and B, so it's less painful to do it by myself. Just because placing all that grass in a... Grass, stone, and all that stuff in a specific way is painful. But uh, yeah, he's been a big help so far with trees and stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's hard with school starting started now, too. But maybe, like, Christmas break or something, I could be like, Ayo, whoever wants to help terraform, get on right now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I'd like to, um, I'll probably release that map the first time after I finish chapter three, I'll upload a thing of it, and then, uh, from there, I will, yes, I'll probably finish it and then upload it again unless I have a point where I'm like, yeah, this seems like a good spot to release another por another portion. But then, because chapter 3 would just be 50% done. I think there's... Are there 5 or 6? No, there's 5. So I guess it would be... Te technically, it would only be 50 because of how big chapter 4 is. That's going to be a nightmare to make. That's going to be not a little nightmare. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Now having the Hell and Neighbor thing, too, it's going to be a little bit hectic.
but I think Little Nightmares 2 is my priority because I know that's gonna take longer either way. As much as Hello Neighbor is a huge project, I have more help with that than I do with Little Nightmares 2, so I want to just get as much as I can done on Little Nightmares 2 while the game's still relevant. Because by the time I finish it, it's not gonna be relevant. I think we all can <laughs> guarantee that at this point. Unless I come up with a third one and then I can be like, haha, second one, I'm behind. And then I would consider making the third one, depending on a lot of things, if they make a third one. I don't expect them to, but I'd enjoy that. But there's tons of possibilities for map releases, even this is a thing. Which I may do, if I ever end up moving to PC or just doing something with it. As long as I don't lose the world or anything. But I have copies and stuff. But it's more so if I have an issue with my PlayStation and not the tutorial world. But uh, yeah, wow, I looked, did the entire thing. But once you've done that, ladies and gentlemen, that is your mansion. I feel like it's the 12th of the 13th installment. Complete. I don't even know the numbers anymore. Thank you for watching this Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know what you guys think of this one. I know it's kind of similar to the last one. I know that it's lazy of me, but uh, whatever. The next one will be better. Have a fantastic dinner, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.